So uh, I don't buy new hardware very often. I usually buy used things. Almost everything I own that is of like the higher end quality is a used item. My ThinkPad X1 Carbon is sixth generation. I purchased this here. Um, and I think the biggest, biggest draw on that is for what I wanted, the sixth generation was able to give me that for a much lower price. For example, I paid $600. And the equivalent 2020 model, or 2021 model, however it works, that one was over $1,000. They're much faster, but in all the ways that I need to use it is fast enough. Which is an 8th gen i7. Not bad. Which brings me to this device, the device I'm filming right now with. This is the uh, Samsung S21 Ultra. And this is the first flagship I've ever bought. I've bought new phones before, but they were always like the budget phone. And the other, and the other flagships I had were used. So this is a unique one crazy traffic on first street where there is never any cars so this test is actually going to be a muscle test raw muscle um, i'm going to be using ffmpeg because ffmpeg is well it's just raw cpu power to crunch video and really of all the things i do my day job and web developer I make these videos but crunching video is probably the most taxing thing that i do so i figured i can run ffmpeg on my phone using Termux, and of course, FFmpeg runs natively on my Linux machine. Okay, we're going to do this test, not super scientifically, but let's talk about the hardware that we're running on. In the top tab, we are um, logged in to my Samsung phone with the 888 processor. Um, this is, of course, under Termux, using SSH to log in. It's fantastic. But this is also how we get access to FFmpeg. In the bottom tab, this is my local machine. This is the laptop that I'm recording this video on. This is the X1 Carbon Rockin' 8th Gen mobile processor. This processor I've used for a while and I know that it is no slouch. I've edited 4K video. I've edited um, uh, 2K video. I've done lots of work on it. I know when it comes to raw, image crunching which is probably the most taxing thing i do it it handles it no muss no fuss so this very unscientific comparison how will the 888 compare to the i7 we're gonna dive in and i have a fantastic clip my buddy uh and i went to the brand new open park we wanted to bring his kid to the brand new park and he of course found his way to enjoy the fantastic swing <laughs> Good stuff. This is a six minute clip properties. Uh, oh, sorry, six second clip that we recorded. It's 4K at 60 frames per second. And it looks like 72 megabit. Not bad. Looks good. It's a good, it's a good stress test, I think. And um, we have a lot we can do with this. So I'm gonna close that. And here we have the sample right there. It's the exact same file. I've copied from one to the other. Um, so we can actually run this test back to back. Now I am recording my screen on my local machine. However, this one is using OBS's hardware encoding using the Intel QuickSync. So very little actual CPU usage that would be used for this test is being used for OBS. Um, but again, there's a lot of variables here that we can't keep track of. So how do we time this? Well, we use the time command, put time in front of anything and it'll automatically, um, track how long it takes to the process. So input sample, and we're going to call the output render.mp4. Let's get this time FF MPEG. <laughs> Sample render dot mp4. Okay, so they're the exact same command. No funny business with the settings. Go on the phone, go on the local machine. We're just gonna sit back and let these two mamajamas work it out. 
already noticing something. This top one's doing 5.9 frames per second, 4.9 frames per second. Something to keep in mind. Well, here we are. <laughs> okay, this is uh, pretty close to the wire. Um, 567 seconds on the Snapdragon 888 and 556 seconds on the 8th gen mobile i7. That's pretty nose to nose. And that just proves that the ARM processors that are in these new mobile devices and eventually will have equivalent chips in budget devices are just as fast as a lot of desktop experience type machines. They're no slouch, man. These new processors are phenomenal. Apple's not the only one who's really just showing what the future of ARM can actually be. So you've done it. You made it to the end of the video. If you like this video, I assume if you got this far, you probably do. You'll probably like my other videos and you can find a little button down below, probably below, that says subscribe. Click on that sucker and you'll see more of my videos as they're released. But if you want to make sure my videos are released in a somewhat timely manner, ish, there's one way you can help speed up that process. Well, more than one way, but the best way is my Patreon. I'm very coy about this Patreon. Did I mention I have a Patreon? I got four awesome subscribers that are helping me make these silly little videos and I'm excited to do it and I'm excited to have you as a viewer of this particular video. I'm talking in circles now. Okay, that's it guys. See you on the next one.